Um, hi everyone, this is Kate and welcome to Kate's Hour of Miracles, which is miracles of love, expressions of love, sharing of love. And if you're listening to this, hello, and I love you, and I honour you, and I bless you, and thank you for being here. We're one in the in the mind of God, and how beautiful is that? <laughs> so today I'll start off with a Holy Spirit prayer. Holy Spirit, I am as God created me. I am holy. I am love. I am perfect. And there was no time I was anything else. There is no separation from my mind and God's. No split. Only unity. Limitless unity and love. I can suffer nothing because I am your son and I am as God created me. Amen. Uh, and I don't think we can hear this message enough because our conditioned mind, which is basically the default, of course, says the ego always speaks first. So we have to hear a different message constantly from different teachers, different ways Jesus presents it in the Course in Miracles over and over and over again. He tells us many, many ways that you are as God created you. And today my talk will be around the love that you are, the peace that you are, and the gentleness that you are. And so we'll be talking about what you what we are, what you are, what I am, <clears throat> rather than looking at what we're not. <laughs> I think I heard Shirley say. There's so many Course in Miracles teachers about you're not your body. And that's a great teaching, but I find uh, we do have to know what we're not, but let's celebrate just this, just today, what we are. Let's just celebrate what we are. And we are this beautiful love of God. We are this essence of this creator that we cannot fathom with our minds, this holiness, this magnificent, magnificence, this limitlessness, this boundlessness, this spirit. There's all words that we use, but it's pointing to us to an experience of what we are. So we, we go, we're going beyond words here. We want to go beyond the words and fall into the experience of this beautiful love of God that we are. So today I'm going to be, my whole talk is going to be around this love and one of the lessons of A Course in Miracles, which will be the focus for today, is Lesson 109, I Rest in God. So this is a beautiful lesson. If you ever have any anxiety or any depression or any fear or guilt, this was my go-to lesson for many years on my journey. And now it's just a song. It's just it, the lessons, uh, the words, the songs to God, praise and gratitude. And when it says song of prayer, that's what a prayer is. It's a song. It's a song from the Father to the Son. And it's a wordless song and it's just joy and gratitude. It's this absolute heart opening of love and gratitude all mixed in. I'm not sure there's a word that embodies love, holiness, gratitude, joy. If there was a word, that's it. And it's just this, I guess, song of prayer, a prayer, a prayer not asking for anything, just telling God how much we love God 
and God telling us how much he loves us. And God, when I'm saying he, is not a male or a female. <laughs> There's just this um, love, this beautiful, perfect, gorgeous love that just loves us. So welcome everyone that's in the room, the Pell Talk room today. I hope you're enjoying this talk and I hope you are feeling this love. And if not, I'm going to read a lesson today, which is Lesson 109, Arresting God. And what I noticed about this lesson when I was going through um, my journey with The Course in Miracles was it basically has nothing about fear or the ego in it. It's all just bringing your mind back. So every sentence, every paragraph, the whole lesson is about bringing your mind back to truth. And so I will read it. I hope you enjoy it. So just sit back and relax and rest. Just completely rest. Feel your fingers and your toes completely relaxed and effortless and just floating. Feel your body just, see, just relaxing. Feel all the muscles. Just everything dropping. I rest in God. We ask for rest today and quietness, unshaken by the world's appearances. We ask for peace and stillness in the midst of all the turmoil born of clashing dreams. We ask for safety and for happiness, although we seem to look on danger and on sorrow. And we have the thought that will answer our asking with what we request. I rest in God, this thought will bring to you the rest and quiet and peace and stillness and the safety and the happiness you seek. I rest in God. This thought has the power to wake the sleeping truth in you, whose vision sees beyond appearances to that same truth in everyone and everything there is. Here is the end of suffering for all the world and everyone who ever came and yet will come to linger for a while. Here is the thought in which the Son of God is born again to recognize himself. I rest in God, completely undismayed. This thought will carry you through storms and strife, past misery and pain past loss and death and onward to the certainty of God. There is no suffering it cannot heal. There is no problem that it cannot solve and no appearance but will turn to truth before the eyes of you who rest in God. This is the day of peace. You rest in God, and while the world is torn by winds of hate, 
your rest remains completely undisturbed. Yours is the rest of truth. Appearances cannot intrude on yours, on you. You call to all to join you in your rest and they will hear and come to you because you rest in God. They will not hear another voice than yours because you gave your voice to God and now you rest in him and let him speak through you. In him, you have no cares and no concerns, no burdens, no anxiety, no pain, no fear of future and no past regrets. In timelessness, you rest while time goes by without its touch upon you. For your rest can never change in any way at all. You rest today. And as you close your eyes, sink into stillness. Let these periods of rest and respite reassure your mind that all its frantic fantasies were but the dreams of fever that have passed away. Let it be still and thankfully accept its healing. No more fearful dreams will come now that you rest in God. Take time today to slip away from dreams and into peace. Each hour that you take your rest today, a tired mind is suddenly made glad. A bird with broken wings begins to sing. A stream long dry begins to flow again. The world is born again each time you rest and hourly remember that you came to bring the peace of God into the world, that it might take its rest along with you. With each five minutes, that you rest today, the world is nearer waking. And the time when rest will be the only thing there is comes closer to all worn and tired minds, too weary now to go their own, their way alone. And they will hear the bird begin to sing and see the stream begin to flow again with hope reborn and energy restored to walk with lightened steps along the road that suddenly seems easy as they go. You rest within the peace of God today and call upon your brothers from your rest to draw them to their rest along with you. You will be faithful to your trust today, forgetting no one, bringing everyone into the boundless circle of your peace, the holy sanctuary where you rest. Open the temple doors and let them come from far across the world and near as well. Your distant brothers and your closest friends 
bid them all enter here and rest with you. You rest within the peace of God today, quiet and unafraid. Each brother comes to take his rest and offer it to you. We rest together here, for thus our rest is made complete. And what we give today, we have received already. Time is not the guardian of what we give today. We give to those unborn and those passed by to every thought of God and to the mind in which these thoughts were born and where they rest. And we remind them of their resting place each time we tell ourselves, I rest in God. So that's the lesson. 109, I rest in God. It's just so, so beautiful. And interestingly enough, it talks about just towards the end where we call our brothers from far across the world and near as well. And I'm reading this lesson and it's being broadcast on the other side of the world. And I know a couple of my friends that live in Melbourne near me are listening, uh, Sydney and Melbourne are listening right now. So this call is going out to close friends and what seem like far away friends. And I'm opening the temple doors of my mind and my heart and saying, you can rest with me. I'm here. You can rest with me. And thank you, Sharon. I bless you. So we can really sink into this love and feel God's love. And when I used to practice this lesson, I used to imagine God just having these really big, beautiful arms, like a father, a really beautiful, loving father and really big arms like and I would climb into his arms and I would lay down in them and he would hold me cradled like a child and his arms would just hold me because some days weren't good days and I needed to climb into his arms and rest there and just feel his perfect love. And for a moment in the world of clashing dreams where I thought I was, I could rest. And so this is available to us. This is on offer to us to use these beautiful loves. Thanks, Sharon. Whenever we have clashing dreams, clashing worlds in our life, we have to go within and find the peace. And that is how we offer it to others. Thanks, Sharon. She said she's listening. She listens to me. Yes, I did have chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, depression. And the only way 
I could ever help my daughter or anyone around me. It's to accept the atonement for myself completely. It's a little bit like putting on an oxygen mask in a plane. You have to accept the atonement for yourself before you can offer it to anyone else. So this is what we do. And part of our journey is the resting in God. Some days we can't, we just can't listen to a teaching. The teachings just mean nothing. Our mind is in turmoil. There's nothing that we can take in. So this is a beautiful lesson on those days when there's just overwhelm and we just need to rest. And then there will be time for when we can get back to the teachings of the course and read the text and learn more and read other books. But sometimes we need to sink into this stillness. So we need to be in touch with what we need at particular times on our journey. We need to, we need to allow ourselves just time to just completely be present with God and his rest and just drop into that and stay there. I'm going to read another. Sorry, that's my, my dog in the background there. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> my daughter always makes fun of my dog's bark. <laughs> So every time I hear my dog barking, I'm always imagining my daughter making fun of my dog. So I'm always laughing. <laughs> She's got a funny bark. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so this is uh, from lesson. 108 and this is beautiful this is in line so today's um, message is all about who we are resting in God that we are God's love that we are the peace and joy of God that we are sinless that we are innocent that we are guiltless that we are perfect that we are whole We've never done anything wrong, never ever, because what is all encompassing, this all encompassing love of God has no opposite. And that's what we were created as. And nothing unreal exists. So all these, all these lessons, all these uh, lessons of the course all join in to say the same thing. But you're not your ego, you're not your false thoughts, you're not what you're perceiving in the world. You're a mind full of love and you might call it heart. Well, some people like to call the, use the word heart because that resonates. Some like the mind of God, whatever word works for you. So... A lesson 108 has got this beautiful um, part that, which is just opposite lesson 109 and this is what I was reading this morning and my eyes looked over and I thought, oh, I like that. <laughs> um, 
Today we practice with the special case of giving and receiving. Now giving and receiving, interestingly, that in this world, we think that when we give something, we lose it. But it's actually all the other way around. We can only actually have it as we give it. We have to give this love. We have to give this love and kindness and gentleness to our brother who is us. There's no separation. So our brother is us, our children, our parents. We're all the one mind of love. We all just look like we've got little different fences around the love, but the love has no fence around it, which is what we call the body. <laughs> it's just something trying to fence off love, which can't be fenced off. <laughs> so as we give, we receive. So this boundless love, can't be. There's no boundary or limit on it. So today we practice the special case of giving and receiving. We, this is from lesson uh, 108, to give and receive are one in truth. So you will, if you haven't already realised this, you, you will realise that the beautiful way to feel love is to give it. Is to, to feel this love is to extend it and share it and that's how we receive it. We keep it by giving it. And the thing about love is the more you give it away, the more you feel it. I was thinking this morning when my son was born, I loved him so much. And then years later I got pregnant with my daughter and I thought, how am I going to love my daughter the same as I love my son? And then I realised when I had my daughter that <laughs> this love just extends. And I got my first realisation that there's, this love is limitless. If I had six children, they would all be loved the same. And then what we come to see or how we come to be with the Course in Miracles as we practise it is we actually love everyone the same. There's no special love for one or another. There might be different things in form. You might live with one particular aspect of Christ as your partner. But your love in your heart, which is God's love, is the same love for everyone. It doesn't have any changes because we're in God's mind now and we can only feel his love for all radiating out as it is. It's this perfect love that doesn't feel anything but love and it has no opposite. So it's just loving and loving and loving and shining its love on everyone. And we join back to that. That is what we are. That is all we are. And any time we have a thought that says that, that that's opposite to that, that is just not true. And that's the tiny mad idea right then and there that I can be separate. The tiny mad idea didn't happen millions of years ago, it's happening now in our minds when we think we're separate because there's only now, there's only ever now. It's a timeless now. And the tiny mad idea is now, if we're having it in our minds now. And that's all we have to do is accept the atonement for ourselves. And once they've accepted it, and our mind is clear. We're just loving limitlessly, everywhere, everything. This world is seen completely different when our mind's healed. It's just impossible to see 
we might still see with our eyes that our mind's been healed of its misperceptions. And this lesson says, today we will attempt to offer peace to everyone and see how quickly peace returns to us. The Course's teaching is, as I see my brother, I see myself. As I offer peace, it returns to me. To everyone, I offer quietness. To everyone, I offer peace of mind. To everyone, I offer gentleness. If you have anyone in your life that you seem to be having difficulty with, this is a beautiful lesson. Offer quietness, offer peace and offer gentleness, which are aspects of love, God's love. Say each one slowly and then pause a while, expecting to receive the gift you gave. So God's laws are not the same as this world's laws. God's laws are as you give, you receive. So you start to feel better as you start to give peace, offer peace, offer love, offer a smile, offer a wave, open a door for someone, donate some money to someone, give someone a hug that needs it. Someone comes to you and they're upset, offer a listening, an ear that just listens without judgment, just love. Just choose love in every moment come from love. And sometimes when we think back to when we've been upset or anxious or depressed, all we want is someone to just sit and listen, just listen to us and offer love. Just resting with us, like resting in God. Just resting a while with us, sitting with us, not trying to fix us or change us or lecture us. Just resting with us, loving us, holding a hand, listening. That's it. Just this beautiful quietness of love, extending. And there's what, another thing that I'm going to read today is from the lesson on 110, 110. I am as God created me. I'm going to start on paragraph four. I am as God created me in this one thought is all the past undone, the present saved to quietly extend into a timeless future. If you are as God created you, then there has been no separation of your mind from his. No split between your mind and other minds and only unity within your own. The healing power of today's idea is limitless. It is the birthplace of all miracles, the great restorer of the truth 
to the awareness of the world. Practice today's idea with gratitude. This is the truth that comes to set you free. This is the truth that God has promised you. This is the word in which all sorrow ends. I am as God created me. His son can suffer nothing. And I am his son. Then with this statement firmly in your mind, try to discover in your mind the self with a capital S who is the Holy Son of God himself. Seek him within you who is Christ in you, the Son of God and brother to the world, the Saviour who has been forever saved. You are as God created you. Today, honour yourself. Let graven images you made to be the Son of God instead of what he is be worshipped, not today. So I'm just going to close the book up now. What, what Jesus is asking us to do is to open our minds to a new way of being, a new perception. And he's not asking us to just sit around and do nothing about it. He's asking us to be the love. And this is A Course in Miracles is a book that you read, but you will be trans, your mind will be transformed by it. And he's asking us to be the action of his love in the world. He's asking us to offer peace and offer love to all our brothers. And he's telling us that this is how we awaken, that we have our Christ mind. And the only thing that's ever in front of us is the perfect sinless Christ in front of us, not as a body, but as a mind. And he's asking us to just try to practice this as much as we can so that we can see that this works and as it works as we practice this and we start to feel ourselves feeling more peaceful it confirms to us that these teachings work and over and over We confirm to ourselves that we are the love of God. There's only one mind here and it's God's mind. And we are that. And it's very difficult at times for that to be our experience, our constant experience. Because our eyes see separate bodies and separate things. And so our perception, our touch, our smell, our hearing and our sight confirm a world of separation. And that's why it takes great willingness to go beyond what our senses tell us and start to 
practice, spiritual sight, spiritual vision. And that comes with our mind. We have to use our mind to do this. So when we talk about resting in God, we have to use our mind to imagine this rest. We have to use whatever we can in our mind to just purely, whether it be beautiful big arms that hold us and we can rest our head on the shoulder and feel completely comforted by these beautiful arms of God and completely loved like a little child. And we can just say, Father, Father. That's all in the, in the wordless prayer. Just Father. And as we say those words, we can just feel this connection to the Father. And it's not male or female. It's just our creator. But it's not like we're any different than that creator. We are exactly that. And we start to go into a mind that is so loving and so perfect and so clear and so quiet. And we completely rest in that, in complete stillness. And we can feel this love. We can feel this love around us, as us, coming through us. And this love looks out onto a world that it absolutely loves. Just sees the beauty and the magnificence and the holiness of every living thing. Everything is holy. Everything is love. Everything is just beautiful and gorgeous. And the mind of God just wants to love. It just wants to give and extend and tell each aspect of God how beautiful it is and how gorgeous it is and how holy it is and how adorable it is. It just sees only holiness and its limitless, boundless love just blesses everybody and everything, everywhere. It doesn't see separation that would be so foreign to its mind, it couldn't even have one thought that it's separate. The thought could not be thought. <laughs> It's impossible for this mind to be anything but limitless love, boundless love. And it takes no time. It's here now. If you're following my words, just sink into it. Rest in God, rest in your mind of God. This is your mind. 
joined with God's mind. It's one mind. It's not your mind or God, God's mind. It's one mind. This mind, now, below the thoughts, just as it is resting deeper and deeper into this deep, deep peace of God, of pure love, of peace, of gentleness, deep rest. And from that peace can all the world be the doing and the throwing <laughs> and the coming <laughs> and the going. And from that peace will bubble up the laughing from that peace all the joy and the love will bubble up and it will rest in this deep peace, this unfathomable, bottomless peace that doesn't move and doesn't shift. It's like being at the bottom of an ocean where everything is still and the waves on the top have no effect. The waves are there, but they're not touching you. Where you are, is so still and so quiet and so restful. This stillness doesn't leave. It's the background of your mind. Wherever you go, you can get on with your daily life completely living from this stillness. And looking out at the blessings that God has put in front of you. See not the bodies, to see the beautiful love of God in front of you and everything. Just use your mind to see the love. See God in everything and offer everyone you meet, every little ant, every little bird, just bless it. Say I love you and I bless you and I honour you to every little thing you meet. And you'll feel this love, this peace resonating deeply inside you. you will feel the most amazing love and connection and joining 
to everything. Your mind will expand. You won't be able to find yourself because you will be everywhere. You will be in every living thing. Everything you look at will be you. Your mind will just see God. You are God. There's nothing but God. There's nothing but love. Nothing but beauty. Nothing but holiness in everything you see. And you will bless it because you know that's all there is. And you won't be able to see anything but the beauty of God everywhere. And you'll be so happy. You'll just be so happy seeing everything so beautiful so loving your mind will be very quiet it will rest in such deep stillness it will be so quiet you will just feel so amazingly peaceful And everything will just be looked upon as it is. There will be no labels. You will be like a child. Before you had labels for ants and earwigs and bugs. They were just things. Looking at. Just looking at them. And with a wondrous eyes. Just seeing them for what they are. Look at everything as if you've never seen it before. And you're curious. And you've got this curiosity and this wonder and this love. There's no fear because you don't know what anything is. Even a little spider, if you didn't know that they could bite you, you would just play with them. You just love them and find them interesting and fascinating. You'd be curious and joyful and watching them spin a web. and just join them and say, how's your day been, Mr. Spider? <laughs> what have you had to eat today? What have you caught to eat today? And what a beautiful web. You will see everything differently. Just look upon everything as it is without labels, without a past. Just live in the present, seeing God in everything. Okay, so now we'll just maybe lift our minds out a little bit. Just lift it up and stretching your body and coming out and moving. And I'll read one of the little prayers. And this is appropriate because 
one of the lessons I read was I am as God created me. So this is lesson 219. I am not a body. I am free. For I am still as God created me. I am God's son. Be still, my mind, and think a moment upon this. And then return to earth without confusion as to what my father loves forever as his son. <laughs> that was pretty much what I was saying in the meditation today. Be still and then return to this world without confusion. It has come from this love, this sense of peace. Just come back. And Sharon, who's um, on the Pell Talk, Sharon, just love your daughter. Just love her. Just love, love, love her. That's all she needs. Everything is a call for love. Just love her. Don't enable her. Just love her. It doesn't matter what you do. It's where it comes from. If you come from fear, it won't work. Just come from love and you'll see miracles. Believe me. You'll see the most beautiful miracles. Just love her from this love. Don't lecture. Don't try to fix. Don't try to change. Just love her. And that's for Sharon. <laughs> and to everyone who's listening, obviously. <laughs> that's what we do. Why would you want to fix? what is already perfect. You need to see the perfection. If you're not seeing the perfection, you need to change your glasses because you're not looking clearly on the Holy Son of God who needs no changing or fixing. Okay, so it's time to leave. <laughs> I love you, I bless you and I honour you and thank you. And thanks, Nicole, and everyone who's listening. And Thanks to awakeningtogether.org and Ken, Shirley and Regina and David. Bless you and good evening. Oops, hang on. I've got to change this. Oh, yeah. Um, hang on. <laughs> just, I've just got to change this mic back. <laughs> oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>